Hello there, and thank you for clicking on my video. Um, this is the third Kuva Brahma video that I've made in pretty short order, and this is going to be the longest one. Uh, if you haven't seen the other two, if you do need to know the information, there is a basic Baby Tenno's first Brahma, and then there's also a scaled Steel Path Brahma. Um, but this video is going to be for the people that um are willing are willing to chase damage at all costs um and it's going to talk about specifically mostly um a mechanic that's on the wiki but i've never seen anybody make a video on it so this this video is going to encompass a brahma build at its core but it is going to talk about the interaction with certain helmet abilities and the flexibility that it provides that I've never seen mentioned anywhere else. But it's it's on the wiki. Okay, so I'm holding the Brahma right now. If you recognize it by the color of it, you know that this is a cold Brahma. Obviously, um, the meta is Viral Hunter Munitions. And we have helmet on... Grendel's Nourish, which gives us bonus uh, toxin damage. But the unique feature about these helmet abilities, and every element has its accompanying frame, like Nourish gives toxin, Ember has heat, Frost has cold, Volt has electric, uh, Oberon has... Uh, radiation, Saren has corrosive and not a toxin proc because it's a final multiplier. But there, there are a bunch of mechanics that roll together into the flexibility of this. And because of the helmet system, you are actually able to mod um, viral onto your weapon without having to mod for it. You're able to basically helmet on viral. Let me go ahead and kill these guys and get rid of my panzer so you can actually see the viral procs. So you'll be able to helmet on an ability or helmet on a what would you call it? A tier 2 status. A combination status so if you see cold and the hunter munition proc and also blast which is innate on the Brahma we're gonna turn on uh, nurse strike which is a helmet from Grendel and you can see we got viral now And the slash is actually doing pretty well. Nice little 100k there. So let's look at what the build is and I'll explain if, if this is news to you guys. Um, just listen up if you know what it is. I'll talk about the flexibility in a second. This is a no riven build. Obviously you got the crit chance care damage. Um, but our basic multipliers, multi-shot, bane, because it's an AoE weapon, this will, the fall off does reduce your damage. So this acts as a way to improve your overall damage, plus it makes the range huge. Crit chance, crit damage, and obviously hunter munitions, so we can bypass um, the grenier's defense, the armor, because slash bypasses armor. And primary merciless because we're mostly going to be killing with dots. Uh, we have the stacking damage. We also have the reload speed, which doesn't help too much with the Brahma, even though it does have a reload. Um, and the bigger part is 100 ammo max, um, which is super nice because they nerf the max ammo. But if you notice, I was hitting uh, for viral. And the only thing that's on this weapon is cold. So where normally you're incredibly um, 
tight on primary modding as well as melee modding. You can helminth on uh, something like Nourish, which gives you Toxin. But the unique thing about no uh, Nourish that doesn't apply to Saren's Toxic Lash is Toxic Lash is a total multiplier. Nourish actually is considered a mod and will combine with elements on your what you're dealing damage with. So if you're running a slash weapon and you're going up against the corpus but you have the perfect build and you don't want to change it, you can helmet on Grendel's Nourish to get Toxin onto your weapon. Um, but if you also happen to have Cold on the weapon, say due to like a Riven or something, you can use this to then get uh, Viral onto your weapon. Uh, likewise, if you have a Electric Brahma, like this one, See, electric only. And now it's corrosive. So this is a way for us to get uh, corrosive and viral onto a weapon that normally wouldn't have it. Um, it does combine like normal, but it acts like a, like an extra mod. So food for thought on this mechanic, but ultimately the point of this video was to come up with the sweatiest possible build for an endgame Brahma, which is already an endgame weapon. And I think this is a good candidate for it. Normally you wouldn't have the space to put hammer shot or galvanized scope on here. We even moved attack speed or fire rate off the weapon. So there are a ton of free mods all of a sudden where normally you wouldn't be able to fit these. And this is too conditional to be part of like a core build, but now we have the space. So chamber, we have a smite mod, crit chance, uh, and with the galvanized accel or the uh, acceleration arcane, this isn't an issue. It fires just fine. Regular crit damage, but we also have uh, hammer shot and galvanized scope. Uh, so this is a nice touch. Um, it is obviously way more sweaty, and we won't be using the ribbon because I want it to be something that everybody can build if they actually uh, want to do this. I was even trying out galvanized aptitude, which is dumb as it sounds. The boosted damage still applies to the arrows themselves, but not the explosion, right? I found that even with this, whenever you're hitting something big, like if I'm going to be doing uh, Tavuni, Steel Path in a second, because of all the tunnels and everything, you're still hitting enemies with the arrows. And especially if something... Uh, is trying to jump on you like you won't most of the time you'll be hitting in massive aoe's and killing enemies that way but if an acolyte jumps on you they're face to face with you 90 percent of the time like they spawn nearby and then literally run right at you so you're going to be hitting them with the arrows i actually found that this wasn't that big of a negative um and i would lose from going for this and hammer shot i would lose out on the crit damage but even then, I have so much space left over, I could fit my Riven on here, no problem, and have an insane amount of crit chance crit damage. But, anyway, food for thought on this. Alright, let's jump into a quick, um, like, shakedown. We'll go to the first Acolyte. Uh, if you just wanted to see the build... There you go. Uh, the next bit's gonna be so you can see the damage. Um, but thank you for clicking on my video. I know this is a little longer than what I normally post, but I just wanted to make a proper explanation for this. 
Thank you. Scans show Greenwood harvesting Kuba nearby. Set off the alarms to draw them out, then steal their Kuba catalysts. Predictable. As expected, Grenier have shut down the environmental systems, sending modified life support capsules. These need us to sustain their environment or attach Kuba catalysts to begin harvesting.
good work. All right, thank you for watching. Uh, that's the first acolyte. Killed it in a couple shots, as usual. Um, I hope you appreciate the information. I know this one was a little bit longer than normal, but thank you.